Coming up on Beauty and the Biohacker. Cells aren't really aging. What's happening is something in the blood and specifically the blood plasma is, ch is changing the environment and making our cells act in a different way. That's really what our, that's what aging is about, is the changing of our cells' ability to function at a molecular level. It's usually in our DNA. Um, it's it, a good way to say it is think of it like your DNA is rusting. That's the easiest way. We get rust on our DNA. And is there a way to actually undo that rust? Welcome to Beauty and the Biohacker where we explore the latest tools and trends in self-care, aesthetics, and peak performance to help you live your most beautiful life from the inside out. I'm your co-host, Rachel Varga, a board-certified aesthetic nurse specialist since 2011 with over 19,000 rejuvenation treatments performed on thousands of patients. And I'm Katie Moore, a self-proclaimed biohacker with three years of self-experimenting in the space of health and wellness technology. I'm on a mission to help you achieve success without sacrificing your health or happiness through my YouTube channel, Katie Type A. So join us as we sit down with some of the biggest innovators in the health space, the movers and shakers of the wellness world, and unpack some of the biggest secrets in the skincare and longevity space. We are Beauty and the Biohacker, and we're thrilled to have you along for the ride. Welcome everyone to the Beauty and the Biohacker podcast. Katie and I are thrilled to hang out with you today because we are going to talk all about how we can slow our aging. And I mean, what biohacker doesn't want to look good and feel good in the process. So in today's episode, we are going to discuss stem cells and slowing aging with Dr. Ross Carter. And if you'd like to learn more about today's episode and how you can work with Katie and I, head on over to beautyandthebiohacker.com. We can also check out our favorites page for our top biohacks and special links with promo codes, which of course continue to support the show and save you some money. And this is a really important episode because Dr. Ross Carter is hosting the Biohacker University Summit. So the link to register is biohackeruniversity.com. You're going to hang out with some of the heavy hitters in the biohacking world. Katie and I, of course, will be there and we look forward to seeing you there as well. Let me tell you a little bit about today's guest. We have Dr. Ross Carter. He is the founder of Doc Stem Cell LLC and has been in private practice since 1996 in Atlanta, Georgia, and currently West Palm Beach, Florida. He is a specialist in helping physicians, medical professionals, and health coaches add longevity, epigenetics, and biohacking services to their businesses and practices. He is an epigenetic coach with extensive training in age reduction, cellular reprogramming, and regenerative nanoparticles. He received his fellowship in stem cell therapy in 2017 from the America Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. He is a three times best-selling author, including Doc Stem Cell, The Million Dollar Business Card, and his current bestseller book, Reprogramming Youth, The Revolutionary Method to Reawaken Your Health, Youthfulness, and Vitality. He works as a health consultant at the world-famous Hippocrates Oath Health Institute, which is the largest natural food health institute in the country. He has one of the largest regenerative medicine podcasts in the world, the Regenerative Warrior podcast and show, which can be found on YouTube and Apple podcasts. He is an international keynote speaker on health, longevity, and other wellness topics with presentations in London, England, Paris, France, Rome, Italy, and all over the USA. Welcome, welcome, Dr. Ross Carter. How are you today? I'm great. Thank you for having me on the show. I appreciate it. We're excited to have you here. It's uh, from your uh, resume. It sounds like you know a thing or two about stem cells, hey? <laughs> <laughs> a couple things, a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. Well, we're going to get into all of that today. All Great. things regenerative medicine, anti or, you know, kind of age reversal uh, or, you know, what what do you, what kind of term do you actually like for that uh, category? Because I there's so many people that are like anti-aging or aging in reverse. And I have one. I have a what's word. your take. What's your take? Y euthening. Ooh, there we go. Coined it. Euthening. Love that. Euthening. Yes, wow. that's what we're looking wow. to do is youthening. Beautiful. I love that. Cool. Instead of well, aging. Yeah. The other one. Yeah. I'm writing that one down, actually. That one, I feel like that's going to become part of it's the It's a new term, actually. Yeah. 
jargon. It's going to be in the Webster dictionary before, you know, just like biohacking. Um, <laughs> youth inning. That's awesome. Okay, cool. Well, on that note, let's just dive straight into things and, and cause, you know, let's talk about like the root cause of aging. And as we start to get into that, we'll we'll probably get into some of the ways that we can uh, expedite youthening in that process. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds awesome. You know, when I when I normally talk to to groups and audiences, and as well as on shows, um, sometimes people are wondering, you know, who is this information right for? Is this what I want to hear, or do I want to spend an hour or two hours or something? listening to this person. And so kind of what I want to show you or talk to you about who this is really right for. Um, because really aging is a condition or a process that occurs, but it leads to things that pretty much happen to everyone. We, you develop chronic pain, physical disability. You can even start to develop autoimmune diseases and other d deadly diseases. Or let's say you're a person who is really looking to feel and have the energy uh, like you did when you were, let's say, half your age. Or maybe you have some family member that's experiencing age-related problems and you'd like to see if there's a way to actually help them. Uh, or you probably heard about all those athletes, like the, the sports athletes that go and do these amazing regenerative procedures and, and it keeps them viable in sports for much longer than, um, than, they, that, than before. So if this is somebody, if this sounds like you, then this is the, the, the seminar you should listen to or the presentation. Um, so when we look at disease, for example, what is the biggest risk factor? Uh, is it smoking? Is it high sugar? Is it fats, the sun exposure, not exercising? And the answer really is aging by far. Aging is the number one risk factor in heart disease, cancer, dementia, you name it. All of these conditions uh, are age related. But think about it this way. Um, children, how many children do you know that die from uh, Alzheimer's? None, right? Heart disease, cancer, very few people die or children do. As we get older, that's when we're more prone to it. And in the United States, before COVID actually happened, 2019, about 5,000 people died per day from age-related conditions, heart disease, cancer, stroke, Alzheimer's, diabetes. And so that's where, you know, that's where we need to look at is like how many, these, there's so many people dying from these age-related conditions. And so we first need to figure out what aging is. It is a, it is a progressive change uh, that leads to all these disabilities. We, we have a malfunctioning of a cell that leads to malfunctioning of tissue, the tissue malfunctions, and then the organ malfunctions, and then the, the organism itself starts to malfunction. So there's really three myths about aging um, that I want to cover. And one of them has to do with our cells age over time. So these are what most people think is like, as we get older, our cells get old, older. That's the common misconception because what they did was they found out that there are these experiments where they take rats. They take a young rat and an old rat and they put their, their, their circulation together. Have you heard of this? Parabiosis is what it's called. So what, does, uh, so what happened with the old rat is it's, it, in all tissue lines started to become younger. The hair became come back. It became it got color again. It started restoring hair. The heart became stronger. The cognition became stronger. The muscles, everything started to become younger in this old rat. In contrast, the, the young rat actually started becoming older as well. So if if cells actually age and they become older and they can't be, become younger, then this would not occur. You cannot make an old rat younger again. So that's what this, this amazing parabiosis uh, demonstrated, that there's something in the young blood that's connected to the old rat, the young blood that has, that's causing things to occur. It's causing us to age. And that is really what that research shows. And it's pretty, pretty phenomenal information so that we can look at it and say, look, cells aren't really aging. What's happening is something in the blood and specifically the blood plasma is, ch is changing the environment and making our cells act in a different way. That's really what our, that's what aging is about, is the changing of our cells ability to function at a molecular level. It's usually in our DNA. 
Um, it's it, a good way to say it is think of it like your DNA is rusting. That's the easiest way. We get rust on our DNA. And is there a way to actually undo that rust? Um, and the other thing that another myth is that we can't. Before we get into that second myth, ahead. I have something to inquire with the first go, myth. Go for it. I have heard that when pregnant women are pregnant and their unborn baby, pregnant they're sharing the pregnant. circulation. Yes. Yeah, of course. Gotcha. Um, it's women. Last time I checked. What type of protective mechanism is being offered to the pregnant woman carrying the unborn baby? Because I've heard that there can be this type of interaction to actually like say, for example, a pregnant woman has some type of injury, they actually can get maybe some of the blood from the unborn baby circulating yeah. in their system to add a, a little bit of protection. So can you expand on that? Because I've just heard about that recently. And obviously, you're probably the first, the best person to ask about this. So you're asking if you can use the the fetus in this case, something from that to help heal an injury on the pregnant mother. Is that accurate? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are there studies on that, like a protective mechanism of the pregnant mother from the baby? Uh, I'm not aware of it in that regard where they're actually using the baby, because when you do that, it might cause a damage or injury to the child. And obviously you don't want to risk the health and well-being of the child at that and to time. And actually test for it because it's unethical to test anything on pregnancy. And yeah, you, you, you might not want to uh, address it like that, but it also depends on what condition you're referring to. I mean, if it's like they fell down stairs and they have a broken leg or, or, or is there like an autoimmune condition that's about to kill them? So there's there's very big de degree of conditions that could occur. Um, but you, even when that happens, you know how women have that glow when they're pregnant? Well, there are these little tiny nanoparticles that are getting in the circulation of the woman who's, who's pregnant. And it actually is causing her to become younger because those little nanoparticles circulate throughout the body and uh, they take down inflammation and they allow, they actually make the, 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 the woman younger. So we can actually take advantage. That's actually what we're going to talk about is taking advantage of those little nanoparticles that, that come from, this uh, placental tissue that that remains after a woman's had a baby there's a little regenerative factory going on right you've got a baby in there it's creating it's you know it's becoming larger and and, and growing and you've got just a little you got a you got um a whole little factory there of regeneration you've got your umbilical cord and your entire the entire placenta with the amniotic fluid and the amni amniotic sac it's all there to create a new life, but there's so much available that we can recycle and use for ourselves. I have a quick question uh, just about the, the glow, because I always assumed that was hormonal, like some type of hormonal release, not necessarily placenta, because doesn't a woman also get that sort of like glow right around her menstrual cycle, like right as she's in that ovulatory phase, she has a very similar glow. And I would say that would probably be hormonal. So I, I didn't know there was a difference. There, well, you can have both. Um, when you use these like uh, uh, nanoparticle products on your face, even if you're not pregnant or a guy, I, I can. I, well, there's pictures I could show you that you could see there's this glow and it's a guy and they're not pregnant or hormonal. So it, it'll actually make them have that similar type of look as a person who's been pregnant. Yes, hormones definitely have part of that, but it also has to do with these little nanoparticles that are that are helping the skin become healthier, basically. Gotcha. Gotcha. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying that. And it's exciting to know that uh, there are ex exogenous forms of this glow and we'll get into all of yes. that. <laughs> but let's pick uh, up it, where we left off with the meds, of course. <laughs> sure, sure. Absolutely. The, the, the one I was uh, about to allude to, which is really that we can't slow the aging process. I mean, for years, most people just think that there's just nothing you can do. You're going to get older. You can make yourself look nice while you get older, but you're still going to get older. And they're actually showing in science that we can actually slow it or even reverse it to some degree uh, and make it young, uh, make our bodies really young and keep you there. So it's really has to do with the environment that surrounds our cells. As the environment changes, it influences the cells to change as well. 
you have these things called pro-aging factors and anti-aging factors that are in the blood plasma. And if you are able to dilute these pro-aging factors or add anti-aging factors, that's when you can actually make a difference in the way someone is aging. Um, you may have heard of things like where it was popular where rich people were using younger people's plasma to get younger. Have you, have you ever heard of that? Uh, there was companies that were selling like, you know, 21 year or 18 year old plasma to a 50 year old guy. And it was actually making them younger. And that's true because you're changing the blood plasma and it actually will decrease their, their, their cellular age. So when we're talking about aging, we're, there's, there's two types, basically, we have to look at. What is your chronological age, which is when you were born based on your ID or whatever. And then you have your biological age. Biological age is how old your cells are acting or, or working. That's what's most, most important. It doesn't matter how old your ID says. It matters how old your cells are functioning. I mean, sure, many of us have seen, you know, 50-year-olds uh, that look fantastic. And then we've seen other 50-year-olds that look like they're about to die. So, you know, it's not all about chronological age. It's, it's really all about the, um, the biological age. That's what matters uh, in, in when it talks about aging. And so when we're talking about slowing aging process, we're not going to change your ID. What we're going to change is your cellular aging, how it's functioning so that it function in a, a more youthful manner. And when you're functioning youthfully, you, you regain your energy, you gain your strength, all the things that you start to lose as you start to get older. So what's, what's so exciting about it is since they found that, that it's something in the blood plasma, there are so many options that we can do now to, uh, to enhance that process. So they, they did some studies and they took um, cells out of an older animal and they used these specific chemicals and factors and they made them young into an embryonic state again from an, from an aged cell to an embryonic state just using certain what are called Yamanaka factors. They took that cell that was old, put it into another young animal and it was able to live out the life throughout to, uh, for another animal. So that means that the cell wasn't never aged really it was able to become age like normally again in another animal. So what's what, so that's really exciting is we can literally change our cellular age. And if you look at things like um, space travel, I'll give you an example. Space travel was never something that was available to normal people before until very, very wealthy people decided, Hey, we want to learn how to go into space now. Now you can pay, what, 50, 100,000, I don't know how much, a half a million dollars, you can fly up in space now. Before that I was I think not it's something. like, I heard something ridiculous, like 50 million. I don't think it was that high. I, I, don't think that. I have heard way, that. As, I think it's you, in the millions. I wouldn't be surprised. Whatever it is, I'm sure it's going to go come down as it becomes more popular and there's more people doing it. But before, you couldn't pay NASA and say, hey, I want to go in space. That, that wasn't going to happen. Now it's available to us because of people that have the money to do that. So when they focus a lot of money on a project, things get to have get done. Well, the same thing happens in the longevity space. So now that they figured out all these different factors that can actually change our age to a more youthful state, now you've got uh, billionaires like Jeff Bezos investing in companies that do longevity. There's a, there's a company called Altos Labs, which has some of the top people in longevity. So what, what I, from my experience and knowledge of talking to these people and interviewing them, we've already found pretty much the fountain of youth, the real one, where we can actually change our age. It's just going through the preliminary stages. It has to go through to get it through government trials and all that stuff. But I'm telling you, they've already figured out a lot of stuff. I've interviewed a Dr. Catcher, Harold Catcher, who actually published his research in 2020. And he showed that using what's called fractionated blood plasma, so a, a part of the blood plasma from very young plasma, they were actually changing the age of all the rats in half. So they had older rats, they became half their age. What does that say? And they stayed that way. They didn't just, didn't just get back older again. As long as they kept adding these youthening factors, they stayed at their young state, which is means that 
think about it this way. Take your age now and say, hey, I'm 52. Let's say I want to be uh, 28 my whole rest of my life. If I can use these factors and just keep myself there, I mean, why wouldn't I want to do that? And that's worth a lot of money, obviously. We all want to stay young forever. So you've got these really, ri really rich people now focused from space travel now into longevity. And now because of that, now it's going to actually happen. So you guys, all of us actually, are in the era where we're going to be able to choose when we die and choose how long we want to live. This is amazing. So having 10 plus years in the space of anti-aging, proactive aging, whatever you like to call it, skin yes. rejuvenation, this is really that next layer. And I have been able to test my biological age. It came back yes. at nine years younger. So 100% biohacking is here for How the win for it? me. Uh, what, what I actually, you... I did it with Naveen Jain's Viome, health intelligence. Viome. I know yeah. Viome. Okay. Yeah, Viome. Yeah, I know he's on your summit. He is. And yeah. I found that very interesting. And Katie, do you want to chime in on this? Yeah, I I also just want to say, like, in addition to doing the biome, I'm also doing some DNA methylation tests right now. Uh, yeah, I know epigenetic David, tests like true diagnostic, true diagnostics, true diagnostics right? toolbox genomics. Uh, yep. I am very excited for David Sinclair's Tally Health to come yes. out because yes. it's going to be one of the most affordable at-home ways to really check your biological age over long stretches of time. And as I start to kind of incorporate a lot of his protocols with like metformin and NMN and resveratrol, mm -hmm. which we can get into at another time, sure. I want to test and see if it's actually working because I think there's yeah. a, how fast do these things start to work, you know? And, um, it's exciting. And, but, you know, am I going to go through an entire blood plasma transfusion in the next few weeks? Probably not, you know, but if not I next start few weeks, but right, soon you will be, <laughs> but soon you might have that chance to, and wouldn't yes. that be amazing to be able to then test, you know, after doing a procedure like that, what actually is starting to happen with those cells. Right. So, um, but yes, coming back to Viome, as I quickly got tangent, tangent yes. in a way, uh, I mean, I think any time that consumers have the opportunity to start measuring some of these things that were once completely like disqualified as being quantifiable. You go right. to your normal practitioner today and you say, can you give me something for anti-aging? They're looking at you like aging is normal. This is, this is what we all go through. What are you talking about? And it's like beautiful that we have this opportunity now in this space to start to change that conversation. And so I think any company that is you know, looking at some of these markers and helping inform your decisions around, you know, youthening protocols that you want to take is great. So yes, I've, I've tried a bunch of them. And I think none of them are perfect, but they're all trying to get to a state where people are confident that they have enough uh, information that they can work with. Excellent. Yes, I agree. Well, let's dive and into it. What is stem cell therapy? Well, stem cell therapy is the utilization or the basically taking uh, stem cells from either part of your own body or somebody else's uh, from a donated source and utilizing it for a therapeutic purpose. So that's really what stem cell therapy uh, as a overview is. So let's say uh, you have damage in your joint, like a knee pain or something. So we can take, uh, we can do a bone marrow aspirate, which means we go into the, the pelvis and take some of the bone marrow out and we can take those cells that are in there. They're type of regenerative, mostly what are called hematopoietic stem cells, which are make more uh, blood basically, but there are also some uh, what are called MSCs, uh, mesenchymal stem cells or medicinal and signaling cells. Uh, you can use those and repurpose them in an area where you don't have the repairability. It's not repairing like it used to, like in the, the, the cartilage and the knee. It's not repairing like it did when we were young. So we're using, we're repurposing our own repair cells and we're putting it in, in that area. It stimulates our body to, uh, to stimulate some regeneration to occur and take down inflammation. A lot of times when we're doing regenerative procedures, it's not necessarily creating a brand new cartilage. It's actually just taking down the inflammation that's causing pain and allows you to function better and sometimes never even need any additional treatment on it. 
So that stem cells, if you do it from your bone marrow, you can also utilize them from your fat. There's also cells there that, that are repurposable. But the other one is uh, that's a little bit more common now is utilizing from placental derived sources. When, when you get a little older, like, you know, when you're in your late 40s, 50s, using your own cells, you, you just don't have the same amount that you used to when you were young and their abilities kind of have gone down a lot. And so this way we can utilize a, a cell that's only a, a day or two old. It's very young and new and it has all its vibrancy. And so we're utilizing someone else's placental tissue now, which is different than embryonic stem cells, which people used to ask a lot about, which are you using embryos and, you know, and like, no. And they're like, are you sure? And, and here's an easy way to look at it. Look, there are more births then there are abortions. There's like 10 to 20 times more. So there's a whole lot more placental tissue available than even use of, uh, of uh, aborted tissue. So, and, and, you know, it's just, there's so many morality things related to using embryonic stem cells. You don't want to do that. They're, they're hard to control. So you're using placental derived cells, meaning the placenta after a woman's had a baby, you take those cells, there's all different types of tissue lines that you can utilize and repurpose it to stimulate your body to heal itself. Whether it using cord blood, whether it be using amniotic fluid, using uh, the placental tissue, using the Wharton's jelly, there's all different parts that have abilities to regenerate different parts of your body in a certain different ways. So the whole idea of these stem cells is to stimulate your body to heal itself. It's not creating new tissue. That's another misconception people have. If I take a stem cell from a placental uh, Wharton's jelly, stick it in my knee, inject it in there, I don't suddenly have uh, new cartilage from those cells. That's not what happens. What happens is those cells go in there, they survey the damage, and then they send out these little tiny particles, which are signals. They're instructions on what needs to be repaired. And then you have tissue-specific repair cells that read those instructions, and they start to fix the problems that they, they have. Let's say, like, for example, you have skin cells that make more skin cells, right? You have cartilage cells that make more cartilage cells. Typically, they're called a progenitor cell. But it's just let's just call it tissue-specific stem cell. So basically, these in master instructions go out, and all these different cells start to, to do their job if they can. Sometimes we have limitations. Our body is just not able to repair itself because of too much neglect and damage or age, other factors that, that can affect it. But if you take good care of yourself, the chances of these procedures working are greatly enhanced. I have a quick question about going back to the placental tissue and giving women the option to potentially freeze that placental tissue for yes. use decades mm -hmm. later. Kind oh, of like they just freeze read their... my mind. This is yeah, the like they freeze their eggs. Like, is this happening yet? Why is it not happening if it isn't? Like, what's what's going on with that? So what do you, what do you mean? Explain to me. Like when a woman gives birth and yes. you know that there there is this extra placental tissue, amniotic fluid that she wants to keep and and freeze basically for uh, you know decades from now. Well, In they do the, that. Right. But is that but I mean my placental tissue is not in some like, you know, frozen laboratory somewhere. My mom wasn't given that opportunity. She doesn't know what happened to it. I right. want this opportunity. Come on. I want that. my placental <laughs> tissue. Like, can you imagine? Well, <laughs> here's the thing. Right now, one of the, the challenges is cost. When a woman's having a baby, a lot of times they don't have a lot of extra money to, to go around and save the, the placental tissue or the fluids. There are laboratories that that work with hospitals and they purchase, I guess, the products. I, I don't know that process, but somehow they get in touch with hospitals and they work with them to get the placental tissue. But there are people that do save it and it's wonderful if they can. It's just not as common yet as it will be. It will be in the I'm future. I'm gonna figure out a way. That's, yeah. This is part of my birth plan, just, just you wait. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it makes a lot of sense as women are yeah. starting to think about raising their eggs and, there's a lot of discussion around future repurposing of something that is already part of your body. Yeah. You know, exactly. I, I can see like as more women get educated, this is going to be something they go into thinking about, mm -hmm. not an afterthought 
when they've had the kid. It's like, I know I'm having a kid in nine months and I'm putting down like a down payment to freeze this placental tissue that I can maybe one day use if I have to have, you know, a knee surgery. It's just going to be part of the discussion. And I, that's amazing because I can guarantee my mom never once thought about that. She was just like, will she be an innie or an outie with her belly button? That's literally the most (laughs) placental we got in our conversation, in our, you know, the conversation. And now look at where we are. So it's fantastic. And it's also great because it's empowering, I think, for women to make that decision for themselves too, you know, and family decisions. But, you know, I think just giving people the choice to say, do you want to freeze your eggs? Do you want to freeze your placental tissue? And can you use this for yourself in the future? I'm I'm really excited. I think there's a lot of opportunities here. So true. Yeah. yeah. The future of pregnancies. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Heck yeah. I mean, Sign me up. I'll freeze my yeah. placenta. <laughs> well, I kind of want to have eyes. a baby just to have the placenta, but I don't actually want kids. So that's a, a dilemma. <laughs> yeah. I mean, all jokes aside, this is a very serious, real conversation that we are going to be having, Dr. Ross Carter, you and I, after this recording. (laughs) Separate from That is for sure. So getting back to stem cell regenerative therapies, when I think about skin rejuvenation, lasers, injectables, all Mm -hmm. these things, they do need to be done with quite a bit of skill and with great quality products. And over time, the quality of the products and the application of those products gets better and better over time. So I know that you are on the forefront of this, which is just, I'm so thrilled to have you here on the show. Thank you. So in your experience, I think this is, you know, you're, you're the cutting edge, you're going to be teaching others how to do this, you're already doing that. Right. How long right now do these stem cell therapies last? Sure. How often can they be repeated? Repeated? What does essentially a treatment plan look like? And full disclaimer, this is not medical advice. This is educational information only. If you want more information, you're just going to have to work with Dr. Carter. <laughs> so uh, basically, how long do they last? It really depends on how they're being utilized and for what purpose. Uh, I'll give you an example. Normally... There's a two-phase process that occurs when you're doing a treatment. There's the process, the first phase, which is taking down inflammation, right? So when you utilize these stem cell type procedures, and there's different types, and I'll go into that a little bit, but when, when you utilize these procedures, the stem cells or stem cell procedures, they take down inflammation. And that's usually that happens first and uh, really quickly. So let's say I do an injection in somebody's knee, for example, and they start to feel great within a week or so. Let's say a week they're going, oh, I feel great. Now, have they, has the tissue been repaired at all? It hasn't had a chance, not a chance. It's taken down the inflammation that was causing the pain that they feel. That's why they feel better. But they still have to give it the second wave of effect, which can last for a year, is where the tissue starts to rebuild itself and start to start to heal and repair some of the damage that had been that had been caused. So that can last three to nine to 12 months. It depends on what what's happening there. So that's really what I when I say how long does it last? It very it varies based on what phase you're talking about and what your goal is. Now, I'll give you an example. Like when I was uh, 2011, I decided uh, I was single. I wanted to meet meet girls. And uh, I, I started taking a sport called dodgeball, which was a terrible way to meet people, by the way, because it turns out like when you, when you take a ball and smack a girl in the face about 50 miles an hour, it's really difficult to ask her out for, for a drink uh, later, just saying, just, just for knowledge for other people. And, uh, but, but, but also, um, I tore my ACL playing the, the sport, so I was done with that after that. And uh, I went to an But did you actually meet a girl? I don't know, no. after all of this. Okay. So it's a total waste. Zero women. Total waste. I meant no. Yeah, it was a waste. Yeah. Not only was it a waste of my personal life, it changed everything, uh, my business and everything. And uh, so after that, I went to an orthopedist. He basically said, this is the only thing you can do. We can take cadaver tissue and put it as your ACL or we'll take part of your hamstring and do it. I'm like, well, this sucks. I had a rehab office. I had physical rehab offices. So I did physical therapy, but there was nothing between physical therapy and surgery. I was like, there's, there's like a gap here. There's like, what, what, what do you do right here? And if physical therapy is not enough, but you don't want to do surgery. 
And they told me that they, they could do a repair. And I was like, okay, well, let's do a repair. And the repair, when they told me the repair is actually replacing it with cadaver tissue or, or muscle, I was like, wait, that's replacement. There's a big difference between repair and replace. You know, think about it this way. Like if you're trying to repair your relationship, you're still in that relationship. But if you're replacing a relationship, you're in onto another relationship. So they're completely different. And scar so, tissue and healing that would go along with a replacement. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. You're, you're, you're doing rehab for six to 12 months, depending on what you have to do and you can't walk. Or, there's a lot of problems and pain. Don't forget about the discomfort as well as having a surgery and it's permanent. All My these things. My sister had this exact surgery done. She yeah. had a cadaver hamstring put in her knee and she is almost in the same exact state she was before. Right. It didn't, and didn't work out. Do. Plus, mm -hmm. you know, you've seen all those movies when you put cadaver tissue in somebody's body, you might turn into a zombie. So just got to be careful. Of it. That did not happen. Fortunately, <laughs> Good not yet. Okay. But, well, I, but I, I mean, fortunate. yeah. And so we, we actually, I sat down with her last week and I was like, yeah. we need to talk about stem cells because I don't know where you go from here. I literally, that yeah. gap, that gap that you're talking about between the surgery and the physical therapy exactly, and, and not doing another replacement surgery, where, where do people go? This is like just absolutely so top of mind for me right now. So let's, let's get into how, what that could look like, what those treatments what, might look what, like. What happened with, with you? Well, uh, so, so that's when I, uh, I, I actually was trying to find some other solution besides the surgery. And I found something called stem cells and they were out of Asia. So I literally was like, I had to do this. So I flew to Asia, spent three months in uh, South, South Asia. And I learned all about these stem cell procedures. That's when I learned about placental derived cells. And that's when I did uh, a placental derived injection into my knee. It took about, uh, it took maybe all of two minutes, uh, you know, unlike a surgery and rehab. And I did no rehab. I just did my normal life. Uh, about a month and a half, two months later, I, no pain, no swelling, no, nothing. Everything was gone. I was back basically to my normal self, uh, after two months, of uh, after one shot that took two minutes. And, um, you know, I always get question, oh, well, how long did it last? How long did it last? Well, it's been 11 years and I did a marathon just a few, few months ago. Um, so I'd say it lasted. It worked, you know. <laughs> okay, it's I under true. I understand the rigors and the roadblocks to stem yeah. cell therapies because if it works as well as you're saying it works, then you don't need the orthopedic surgeon and all of the rehab that goes along with that. No. But also, you know, there's probably some questionable practices that were used in the past to figure this stuff out. As with pretty much any medical procedure, hello yeah. World War II and all the innovations yeah. that came from that. This is just how things evolve. But I understand exactly. now the roadblocks. Because when something seems to really help people, things start to get in the way. And I think this is just crazy. It's like, this is like healing magic. It's like you're using human to heal human as opposed right. to this other layer that's, you know, artificially created by human. Or this is just, uh, there's some deep dives here for sure. Absolutely. So in your experience, what are your top ways to slow or reverse aging that is working for yourself, your patients? We're not only talking about joints here. We're also talking about face, neck, chest, body, skin rejuvenation. We're on the Beauty and the Biohacker podcast. We want to feel great with our joints, but we also want to look our best too. So what are some of the uh, interventions and options that, that you are working with for skin rejuvenation? Well, skin rejuvenation has responded uh, like so well to using what's called exosomes. Exosomes are little tiny nanoparticles that come from uh, different, our, all our cells communicate like a, like text messaging, right? They've got, you got a cell here. It wants to talk to this cell here. And it sends these tiny little bubbles, right? Like a, think of it like an encoded text message. Those little bubbles have messages inside and there's a protective barrier around it. So it doesn't get degraded in the body. So it sends these little tiny bubbles and those bubbles are termed a bunch of different things, nanoparticles, or typically now they're called exosomes. And inside those little bubbles is this message. So this, this cell wants to talk to this cell. It, talk, it sends a little bubble. And then that other cell reads the information and it does whatever it, the message says to do. 
So those little tiny bubbles are called exosomes, and now they concentrate those little things, and they are, if they're from stem cells, they're very regenerative. So they have messages of regeneration. So you can put that on your skin, and it will stimulate your skin cells to start regenerating like it did when you were young. So it'll develop collagen, it'll replace all the old cell tissue and create new cellular tissue. And, you know, that's, it, it can do some miraculous things with your skin. That's I'm it. very familiar with stem cells in skincare. I've worked with stem cells and uh -huh. skincare for almost a decade, but they've, they've been plant derived. Some of them have been from human foreskin donations and then re-replicated right. from that for growth factors and whatnot. So I'm really looking forward to the, hu the, the human, the evolution of this. Do you think that exosomes and, um, you know, nanoparticles and skincare should be more human derived or plant derived? Uh, well, <laughs> I would say it would be probably better if they were from humans, just because that's the kind of tissue that you have and you're not a plant. So I would think the human would probably be more effective to, to work on your, your own skin. Um, the, the challenge that I have with a lot of the products that, are, that have these uh, growth factors in them is that in order to keep these viable, like a cell viable, you have to cryopreserve it. If, it's, if it goes below that, the cell dies. So you're having de dead cells. Now, you can still have growth factors as well, but it to preserve as much of their viability, they also have to be frozen. So I just did an exosome procedure where I put frozen exosomes, which I thawed, into my own body. And what that does is it just regenerates. The, my whole body is regenerating right now. You probably can see it on the camera. I'm getting younger. It's like Benjamin Buttons here. So I noticed so, in the last five minutes, I was like, oh, my he's gosh, getting, he's, he's getting, getting more getting, hair and he's, he's, he's glowing. youthening. He's youthening, youthening you people. Go. You got it. So. So, yeah, you can use these factors um, for skin rejuvenation as well as all kind of rejuvenation. I think it's going to be a, a more effective than just plants. I mean, plants have wonderful. Uh, I think they they people are capitalizing on the word stem cell when it comes to anything. And they say, oh, we have plant stem cells. I mean. OK, what the hell does that mean? You know, I mean, do you want I, I'm not looking to grow it's derived leaves. from like Swiss apples and stuff. Hey, I, that, look, I have I a strawberry coming out of my forehead. You I've know, just, that's the thing. Yeah. yeah. It's like all of this marketing material is yeah, it almost kind of like reminds me of like the probiotics where it's like these yeah. are live bacteria. And you're like, no, actually, like they they're dead. Like the minute that you ingest it because they need yeah. to be at a certain temperature. Kind exactly of like what you right. Talked about. Exactly right. But, but so you're, gonna, you're putting dead marketing. stem cells on your face. And that's, you know, if that's what you want, that's what you want. But like, don't then jack up the price. I've never so bought into it, it, to be honest. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, you got to watch out for marketing. Uh, everybody's trying to say they're the best, biggest and best thing. Um, and unfortunately, you know, people make up statistics. They make up things. They tell you whatever they want you to hear so that you'll buy their products. I mean. Absolutely. You know, I, I've heard the I've heard a statistic that 80 percent of statistics are actually made up or you could pay someone to say what you want them to say. Or, or that was a made up statistic. Say. I'm not sure. Yeah. Who knows? I but, love I love this. But how, how you got for... it. You got it, Katie. You got it. You're like 80 percent of statistics are made up. But that's also a made up. Statistic yeah, that's also too, made up. Yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. no, I know. It's like, who do you trust? Right. That's why yeah. you just have to be. You have to. Really yeah. It's, it's definitely. You know, how, one of the like, things here, I'll show you the, something for the skin. One of the things I do when I, people will send me stem cell products, right? Mm. And I'll well, go, I'm sure. Okay. I'm sure you get a whole load of them. Yeah. And then I use this, a machine, you can't see it, but there's this device machine mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I can use that I can look at and see what the hell that they're talking about. Is it true? So I use actual science to determine if their products are actually real. And guess what happens? Is it like most a of the time? portable spectrophotometer? It's like a microscope. Or... It's just a microscope. Cool. It, it, it expands okay. the things and I can see all the cells. I can see how, how many are alive and dead, if they're viable, you know, how many there are. They say, hey, you get 10 million cells, really? Because my machine says I didn't get anywhere close to that. And it's it, and half your cells were dead. So 
you know, it's what do you do? Probably detecting voltage between communication with cells and things like that. Sure, sure. Something like I'm trying to, I'm trying to dig. No. I'm like, how does that no, work? It's just, how does... People lie. He's it's just using basic tests. science. He's just looking at a, at a microscope. <laughs> yeah, and just, like no, there's no, there's no organisms here. There's no alive. activity. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Cool. They're all dead, so I can see it on a microscope. So you, you tell me that, you know, they're telling you something wow. else because you know why? How many doctors do you think test their products? None. I mean, no. Well, except for you. Yeah. It, I mean, I, yeah. I, it very, it, it, it takes time. It takes yeah. extra effort and it just doesn't happen. Nobody tests their products. So they, they rely on these companies, these laboratories uh, to make these products and they could be bogus labs. And then you've got a middleman, like a, a white label company that comes in and buys products from a lab. Then they t say whatever the hell they want. So yep. You know, pretty packaging. They get some exactly. influencers to back it up, all that stuff. Well, listen, I know we're running out of time, but I just would like to get one last little bit of information sure. out to our audience, uh, which is you have a summit coming up and you have someone pretty, pretty big <laughs> in the scene uh, who is headlining yeah. it. And I, I'm curious, how the heck did you get Tony Robbins <laughs> to come to the biohacking summit? Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, well, that goes back a little ways. Um, so Tony recently put out a book called Life Force. Fantastic book. If you haven't got it, you need to look at it. It's really got some great information about regeneration and longevity and just all kind of health topics. So it really will give you a, a it'll give you a quick overview of biohacking in general. But uh, so I actually met Tony Robbins probably about five years ago. And Weird enough, I was at one of these conferences, you know, the, how they have these mega conferences where everybody's pitching their products and services, right? You know, Pitch Fest, Pitch Fest 2011, right? Anyway, so you're like, oh, God, one more. But Tony was the main speaker. So we went there to do that. And uh, we did the upgrade where we get to do the meet and greet to say and me and my wife were there. And uh, I, I had a book that, that I had just that I had had for a while. It was a terrible book, but it, it was talking about stem cells and regeneration. And so uh, I gave him this book. I wrote my number in it. And um, he said, oh, I'm really interested in stem cells. This is back uh, six years ago. And he was like, just getting involved in that. And I was like, oh, cool. Well, you know, here's my book. I took a picture. We, we thought that was it. Two, months, two weeks later on a Sunday night at, at 630, I get a phone call from an unlisted number. And I, of course, usually hang up on it. But I just, for some reason, actually answered it. And it, it was Tony Robbins himself, not an assistant like on the phone and I about passed out on the floor. I don't, I just stand up and walk around in circles. Cause I was, I was losing my breath and uh, yeah, he was talking to me and he wanted to know more about regeneration and stem cells and what I knew about it and all that. And I was like, you know, telling him everything I could. And he says, Hey, I tell you what, can you come down to my house tomorrow? And uh, you know, I'd like to meet you and talk to you more. And I'm like, um, the moment I get off this phone, I'll be scheduling a flight because I was in Atlanta and he's in West Palm beach. And, um, so sure enough, uh, yeah, we flew down there and, uh, went over all the stuff. He told me how bad my book was and, uh, but, but, you know, st still my information, I knew a lot of good, good information. And, uh, from there we, we got to an agreement he started having me travel with him to his, uh, seminars. Uh, and he, basically I was, I was giving him research and documentation. And I was constantly educating him in this space, right? I would, that was kind of my job. And, uh, you know, one of the best ways to do it was when he was at his, his presentations, you know, we would have time to meet and, you know, it was fun. And so I got to meet with him all the time and, uh, and I still meet with him all the time, giving him education. So then he put out this book and he acknowledged me in the book, which was nice on page six, six, zero. If you want to look, uh, there I am on the on the acknowledgement page. And uh, yeah, so that's so I've worked with Tony for a long time. And after his book, I was like, you know what, this is this is all about biohacking this book. And I was like, you know what, um, I need uh, I want to put together a lot of experts in this area so that they can, um, you know, understand because biohacking is just accelerated, uh, accelerating your healing pro uh, ability uh, and uh, you know, especially your untapped human potentials, right? So basically that's what it all is and, and incorporates so many things, whether it be sleep, whether it be peptides, whether it be uh, nutraceuticals, whether it be any different, there's so many areas. And so I thought, why don't I put on a, a giant summit, which is going to be the largest 
uh, biohacking summit. And uh, that's what I did. And so Tony was on the board. He said, yeah, absolutely. And you got the book. Oh, actually, I was, uh, I need to, I chatted oh, okay. with you last you know, I week. You, I thought you pulled out is, the book. I was like, I was going to share. This is Dave, oh, Dave Asprey's, yeah. We talked I'm sure you also that. have a mention in there too, right? <laughs> well, he did say thanks for all the skin help in the uh, cover. Uh, but yeah, say, same thing. We People like you and I, Dr. Ross Carter, we get to help out these like rock stars. They yeah. can call us up and say, hey, yeah. what about this, this, this? So I talked to him a little bit about skin peptides and rejuvenation. Yeah. So I'll take some credit there. I'm not in the book, but you know, yeah. that, that is yeah. a thing. But I wanted to also shout out to the conference because Katie and I yeah. are both a part of the conference as well. So all of you yeah. tuning in, you're going to want to check out Biohack the University because Dr. Ross Carter, you have quite the lineup and we're thrilled to be a part of it. Yes. Thank you. It will release the, uh, the, whatever the, where the people, the sign up in July, July 15th is when all the signups are occurring. So if you're wanting to look and listen to the, the presenters, then July 15th will be the day that you'll get a link. If it's before that, you'll, and if you're actually somebody in the space of biohacking would like to even maybe be a presenter on it, you can, you can talk to, you can connect with us there, but either way, it's the same website. So you can, you can connect with me on the website, which is biohackeruniversity.com. And then the official event launches in late August, correct? August 25th is when the, uh, the event launches officially. All right. So mark your calendars, guys. Oh, my yes. gosh. Any closing words? Any final thoughts? Where can people connect with you? And are you taking any new clients other than I'm sending like my Tony husband Robbins? to you after his <laughs> next fight in Florida? He's going to pay you a visit for recovery as an athlete. So I work with a lot of different people. I'm more of the educator and the explainer. I, that's my position and purpose is really to do the the education. I work with a, a large medical team that do everything from joints to IVs to you name it, hair, you know, sexual wellness, everything. Uh, I personally don't do that myself. I'm more of just, you know, helping people understand the, the, the area so that it makes it easy to understand. Um, so that's what I do. So if, if people are interested, you know, my, my regular website is just my name, drrosscarter.com. And, and I, I, allow people to come on and talk to me about specific issues and things. And if there's something they need help with, I can maybe able to guide them in the right directions. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. We must have a part two because we still have four other questions that we didn't sure. get a chance to answer from well, you. So I, we look forward to having you back on. Yeah. Cause I would love to, I, I have a, a 10 steps and things that you can do to uh, actually reverse your age. And so I go through, it's a, and, and that's one of the things I teach on is, is I teach at Hippocrates Health Institute. And this is one of the things I teach about is how to implement this in your, 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 your life. And it doesn't all include things that you have to pay a doctor thousands of dollars for. It's also some things that you can do for inexpensive, uh, in an inexpensive way. So, but I'd love to teach you that on the, on a part two. That'd be fantastic. I'd also love to pick your brains about some of the ethics behind all of this, because as we start to reverse aging, how is that going to affect insurance companies? Like there's a lot that we could talk about. And they won't into. like us very much. They're not we'll going to be, be happy that about that. Well, <laughs> I've actually addressed that with a, one of the, one of uh, Dr. Catcher. I, I addressed that with him. So uh, what I did was I asked him about that. I said, well, if we can keep our age the same, and then we get older and older, but we actually stay young at the same time. Uh, what do, I, I mean, will we ever die? What if we what if we just keep living? I mean, won't we have overpopulation and other issues? And, you know, will it become there's an old movie called Logan's Run that you probably never heard of. But it was it was a movie about where people at a certain age had a little uh, like a little light and that it would change when they turned a certain age. And then they would do mass suicides, but they were, it was a ceremony. So you would be, you're going on to your next destination and it was all this wonderful thing. And this guy, the main character, I guess his name was Logan, decided he didn't want to die and he ran. So he was like that and they were hunting him down. But, you know, what if society becomes like that, where we're to the point where we won't ever really die from health problems. And then we are like, well, we need to, we have too many people. <laughs> what do we do now? And we might have this situation where we have this, 
you know, non-voluntary suicide. Once you hit a certain, you hit 120, that's it. You're done. I think it's like you hit 120 and Elon Musk takes you and you're like, okay, bye bye. And then you just yeah, go to Mars. You have to go like, to the, you got to go to Mars or some other yeah, planet. Transhumanism. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Exactly. That's why we're all built. But that's why Musk is working Goodness. so hard. He knows what's coming. He's like, we got to have Aww. a second planet for these people. Exactly. Um, that's the plan. Stuff, that's why. I'm That's always, why we have space I'm travel. I'm always so skeptical. Right. Always. We got to get those, those, those people everything. that will never die and to another place. <laughs> well, hopefully all three of us could actually have a big party up there one day. That'll be a lot there of fun. Go. I like um, it. I'm having but, a party right now. This is, this I know, is wow. fabulous, That's everybody. crazy. I, I we got to we gotta wrap movie. up, though. Yeah, I know. I want to watch that movie, but I don't know. I'm also, like, terrified. But uh, <laughs> thank you so much, Dr. Ross Cotter. You yes. just... Uh, like I took so many notes. I like, I, I don't even know what to do with myself right now. Like sure. I'm going to have to like transcribe all these. I hope you guys also enjoy this and maybe you want to go back and listen on 0.5 speed. So you can also take down notes and don't do this while driving. We should have put a, a, a mention at the beginning, not sure. to listen to this episode while driving. Cause you're probably going to want to take some notes. It's exactly. fascinating stuff. Thank you so, <laughs> so much. And everyone let's, let's do a part two pretty soon i think that's definitely necessary love to love to thank you thank you guys so much for tuning into beauty and the biohacker today if you enjoyed this episode please make sure to leave a comment or share it on your social media account and we'll give you a shout out and don't forget to head over to beautyandthebiohacker.com to check out all our episodes and our favorites page where we include our curated list of products with special discount codes just for you guys and while you're there sign up for our newsletter because we're sharing some exclusive content and giveaways you won't want to miss. 